everybody, it's JJ. We're here at CNE 2022, and we're really excited to actually talk about the next generation of AMD-based motherboards. So if you've been following the hype train that is Zen 4 and AM5, you know that ASUS is gonna be bringing it. So we've got actually four new X670E motherboards that we're gonna be talking about, from the ROG Crosshair series, to the ROG Strix series, to the Tough Gaming series. We're gonna give you all the deep dive on it and let you know what we're gonna have coming up. So first up, we've got right here the flagship. This is gonna be the ROG Crosshair Extreme board. Now again, all of the boards we're gonna be talking about are the X670E based chipset. That means they're gonna get the flagship level specification support, DDR5, PCI Gen 5. Now when we take a look at this board, you're going to see it's larger than standard. It is an EATX form factor. But the cool thing with EATX means we've got more room to put more on the board. You're going to have this really cool edge-based lighting that looks really slick. You're also going to have right angle connectors. Make sure you've got a big enough chassis to be able to accommodate that. But along with that, you're going to easily be able to route all your radiator fans. You're going to be able to connect supplemental ARGB lighting. Plus, you've got that cool, really edge lighting in effect. Now, another thing that I really love about this board is going to be the Anime Matrix. The Anime Matrix can be fully customized. You can put GIFs, animations, and you can even fully synchronize it with ASUS Aura Sync inside of the Armory Creek software. On top of that, you also have the OLED Live dash display. This display allows you to actually have stat information so you can put things like voltages, frequencies, fan speeds, and a whole lot more. Again, you can customize that with an armored crate. Now when we take a look right here at the VRM, you're going to see this board is built for the next level of performance. It's a 20 plus 2 power stage design, 110 amp power stages, microfine alloy chokes, and 10k rated capacitors. So you're good whether you want to run stock or overclocked. On top of that, of course, you got four DIMM slots for DDR5. You're also going to have the Gen Z.2 add-in slot, so you can easily add in a PCI Gen 5 M.2 SSD. And of course, that complements the PCI Express graphics card slot if you want to be able to drop in a high-performance next-gen PCI Gen 5 graphics card. Now, a feature I really love is going to be this little button right here. This is the Q release. It's a one simple option to be able to easily eject your graphics card. Just drop it in, and if you need to make an adjustment, upgrade your card, make any type of changes, just hold down that button and pull out the graphics card. As we move to the bottom, you're going to see that really cool RGB lighting display, but more critically, underneath all all that beautiful heat sink is going to be the support for up to five M.2 SSDs that can run in this board in addition to the Gen Z added card. Now rounding out this board before we get to the hero, if you take a look at the back, it's stacked with I.O. You've got literally 12 USB ports, no USB 2 ports, and it's built for speed. You've got 40 gigabits, 20 gigabits, and 10 gigabits. On top of that, you've got 10 gig LAN, 2.5 gig LAN, Wi-Fi 6E, and you're going to have the latest generation Bluetooth all on the rear I.O. And don't forget, as always on the ROG Crosshair series, you're going to get our Supreme FX audio design with an ESS Sabre DAC, which for this generation has been updated to the even higher performing ESS 9218. So let's move over to the Hero. The Hero is generally my favorite within the AM5 lineup. It's very similar to the Extreme, but we go to a standard form factor. You're still going to have massive amount of I.O. with, again, 12 ports. You still have 40 gigabits, 20 gigabits, and 10 gigabits. One single 2.5 gig, and then also Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5. One of the biggest differences, as you'll see, it has our Polymo lighting display, which is a multi-layered RGB design. It allows you to go ahead and change it up with an armory crate if you want to have a different vibe. But I also love this board, even without any RGB lighting. If I go ahead and pull that out, you'll see how it almost takes on a really cool chrome-like appearance. It looks really slick. In addition to that, you're also going to be able to support up to five M.2 SSDs on this board as well, including the Hyper M.2 add-in card that comes included in here. You've got all that connectivity that I talked about, and you also still get the Q release and the Supreme FX audio design. Now moving over to the next board here, We've got the ROG Strix. This is a really popular series. It hits that kind of sweet spot for a lot of gamers looking for a premium board, great for overclocking, great for gaming builds, but without necessarily going up to the higher price point and some of the more specialized features that we have on our Crosshair series. So here, if we take a look at that I.O., you're not sacrificing. You're still going to get 13 USB ports, just going to drop down to only 20 gigabit and 10 gigabit based ports. You're still going to have a massive high performance 18 stage VRM design, also still supporting 110 amp power stages. 
and you're going to be able to support up to four M.2 based SSDs. You still have our dedicated Supreme FX audio design, just no ESS Sabre DAC. And a nice upgrade that we have in terms of RGB connectivity is just like the Tough Gaming board that we're going to jump to in a moment, it has three ARGB headers. So if you want to connect things like Tough Gaming fans, our RG coolers, our chassis, you can get that all connected and controlled directly on the motherboard with no third party controllers required. Now last but not least, we've got one of my favorites, which will be the Tough Gaming series. Tough Gaming Series is a really popular board for hitting that kind of sweet spot in terms of price to performance. Stable, reliable, and has a great set of specifications. If we take a look here at the back, you're still going to get 10 ports, 20 gigabits and 10 gigabits, along with Wi-Fi 6C, 2.5 gig LAN, and that latest genera generation Bluetooth. You're still going to have a very high performance VRM design with 70 amp based power stages, 14 power stages in total. You're going to then have your three RGB headers, support for up to four M.2 SSDs, and a big upgrade that we also make compared to the prior generation is multiple M.2 heat sinks. And keep in mind that X670, unlike some competitors, we're maintaining PCI Gen 5 and PCI Gen 5 for both PCI Express graphics cards and M.2 SSDs on all of the boards, including this tough gaming board. The main thing to just keep in mind is that as you go to higher end of the board models, you might have the ability to run more PCI Gen 5 devices like multiple M.2 based SSDs. Overall, that gives you a pretty good breakdown of some of the awesome boards that we're going to be bringing for the AM5 lineup. But, of course, we've got more coming up. So make sure to keep tuned for upcoming announcements from Gamescom. Also, follow our social media channels or check out our Asus PC DIY group because we've got more that's coming for these AM5 series of motherboards. So as always, make sure to go ahead and drop us a comment, hit that like button, and hit subscribe. And make sure to follow us here at Asus.